Okay, here I'm going to be covering algae, and while it may look nice on kind of the waterfront here, growing on the rocks, and in grow space and near uh, plants, it may not be a welcomed guest. Uh, it's found in most areas, though, that have light exposure. Uh, it itself is not a major concern for plants, but it can encourage other pests to develop and it is a sign of poor cleanliness and growing conditions, if you do see that. And it can be encouraged by over-fertilizing. So we see here with the top of the rock wool here, very common occurrence, uh, but that over-fertilizing in areas that aren't kept very clean will encourage this formation that occurs. You can see the rock wool cubes in the back may be kept a little cleaner, uh, maybe newer, uh, not showing or exhibiting the algae that we see here. So these could be over-fertilized or a whole host of other reasons. Uh, but this is evident that something that were not necessarily the cleanest of conditions we're growing these plants in. The identification, well, it looks like green slime, and it's a photosynthetic organism, so look in areas that get some degree of light, even if it's not intentional. And this could be kind of on the underside of something, or if there's kind of two things lying on top of one another and there's a little light getting in, it's an idea where algae could be uh, growing. So you see this on the large scale here with high and low tide, exposing uh, all areas where algae can grow. Now where to look specifically, uh, typically found in areas with high moisture, with light exposure, warm temperatures, and contain some form of nutrients. It can grow both biologically active surfaces as well as inanimate surfaces. So just because something's plastic or metal or wood doesn't mean it will not grow there. Uh, it can easily survive on the exterior surface of these materials. Be careful also to inspect the filters as this can reduce system contamination. A lot of people will check the lines and check everywhere obvious and see there's no algae, but if their filters contain it, circulating water uh, can help uh, that algae spread, even though you think you may clean in the area. So also be mindful, check those filters and make sure they're also algae free. How to prevent it? Well, the most effective method for controlling the plant is to limit the light exposure. This is especially important in hydroponic systems. You can see this cave region where there's light getting in, there's algae, and then where there's no light, there's basically no algae. Here deeper in the cave, we see evidence of that. So by blocking out the light, you can easily prevent the algae from forming. How to control it with regular cleanings is recommended, uh, especially if you see it or know areas where it tends to grow. Be careful what cleaning products you're using and make sure they're plant friendly. Concentrated, which is 35%-ish hydrogen peroxide based products, are often recommended because they have short residual, meaning they will go through and they will kill the algae, but they won't last very long, uh, which is good because it will reduce the likelihood of you damaging the plants. If you do get this 35% hydrogen peroxide on you, I will say it will uh, turn your fingers white. Remember to clean exterior surfaces and also irrigation lines and water pumps. And also remember, check those filters as well. So again, that obvious exterior surfaces, but also remember the irrigation lines, any water pumps, any filters, all important for long-term and effective algae control.